Charles Staley asks, um, is liberalism inherently feminine? I think it is inherently feminine. And here's where the, um, here's where the, uh, the, the, the minefield is. You look at Nazi Germany and you will see in Nazi Germany what kind of hell the world can be when it is completely masculine, when, when all masculine virtues are, are applauded and any feminine, uh, traditional feminine quality, I'm just going to say traditional so we know what we're talking about. I don't know, really need to do that because we know what masculine and feminine means, but we're talking about these traditional masculine and feminine virtues. You want to see hell on earth, then look at Nazi Germany and see what happens when masculinity runs rampant without being tempered by any femininity or any softness or any mercy or any forgiveness. This social Darwinian kind of we're going to exterminate the Jews for our racial purity and we're going to we're going to euthanize the the uh, the mentally ill for our racial purity. We're going to kill or starve or murder 30 million Russians so that we have the Lebensraum, the living space for our master race so that we can rule the world and be the heron folk that we're supposed to be. And, and it's just nothing but brutality, nothing but uh, but uh, rage and aggression and all this other stuff. However, you do get the male qualities. You get efficiency, you get uh, you get order, you get a lot of courage, you get tremendous innovation, tremendous uh, um, engineering, and, and, and many lovely things. So that's what happens when you live in a hell is, that is overly masculine. I think we are really rapidly and accelerating into a world which is the exact opposite of that, where our society is becoming so feminine that it is becoming uh, a different kind of a dystopia. Uh, if you'd ask me if I'd rather live in um, in a world governed by Code Pink or the SS, I'll take Code Pink. So there's no, dis there's no um, confusion about that. But where, when emotionality and feelings become as dominant as they were absent in a place like Nazi Germany, then bad things start to happen. When when how we feel about an answer determines whether an answer is true or not, we lose the ability to do everything that has made this kind of feminist, feminine, not feminist, feminine society possible. You can't have a society this feminine unless the masculine qualities that got you there were well in shape. You can't have this kind of feminine liberalism in a world that is under siege by hostile tribes of men. You just don't, you, it won't survive. You, it won't be tolerated. When there's a wolf at the door, you need big, strong men as a general rule to go out and take care of the wolves. Now, somebody asked a question which I didn't take about the rangers. I don't know the details about these two women that passed ranger school, but I did read an article from a guy who was in that class who said, we not only did not give it to these uh, women, we did not lower the standards for them. These two women actually had to do harder work than we did. If that is true, then they deserve their ranger uh, tab, and, and God bless them for it. I want to be crystal clear on this. If they and it appears that they did. If they were able to meet the same standards as the men in that unit, then then I think they've earned it. Um, but when you get into this kind of code pink feminism and this kind of liberalism and this kind of soft, feely kind of thing where if we would just get boys to stop playing with sticks, then we wouldn't have any war or rape anymore, then you've lost your mind. As I've said a hundred times here, there's only one society that is balanced and 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 decent and provides a Disneyland and and the kind of world that we all grew up in and that's a world where men are not feminized into being weaklings and 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 uh, neurotic crybabies but rather are are taught how to use the the violence that is in their system it's in the testosterone the violence and the aggression is in human men and the reason it's in human men and the reason it's not going to go away is because it is in it is in male apes and it is in male uh, chimps it is in male monkeys it's in male fish it's in male lions it's in male donkeys it's in male everything and it is there to keep the species alive and healthy and at optimum tune you cannot eliminate maleness from the human population because you can't eliminate it from from any of the other population you can't take if you were to take the lions out of Africa the male lions out of Africa pretty soon you would run out of lions not just because they couldn't reproduce but because they serve a function they preserve a function of strength of, of the species and so on now in a thinking society with values and and morals that's only one answer. You're, what you're left with is you have to understand that predatory, violent males are, are out there 
And many tribes that are not our tribe are not very nice people. They don't like women. They rape women and murder women. They rape their 12-year-old nieces, and then they have them stoned for adultery because even though they've destroyed their family's honor, their family's honor has to be protected because they're awful, miserable people. These ISIS dirtbags, these murdering swine, rape women, rape children, rape, kill, murder, they don't care. And they're not going to be convinced by a coexist bumper sticker. It's not going to sway them. And a handshake and a, you know, if we just get together in a hot tub and have a little, you know, maybe a Chardonnay, we get all sorts it's not going to convince them either. And as long as those people exist, and they will always exist because they have to exist, as long as those people exist, then what do we do about them? Handshakes don't deter them. Niceness doesn't deter them. Weakness doesn't deter them. S offering them a knife and extending your neck out and saying, see, we don't mean you any harm, doesn't mean they go, oh, wow, I, re I didn't realize we thought you were just another warlike tribe. No, they'll just use the knife and, th and thank you for the effort. If you offered them your neck and a knife as a way to show them what swell, reasonable people you were, their reaction would not be to feel better about you, but their hatred and contempt for you would increase enormously. They would be in a bigger hurry to kill you. Conversely, if you were one of those orange-clad, um, poor, beaten, probably deceived, convinced they're going to be used for propaganda purposes, one of these ISIS prisoners, and you stood up and kicked that guy in the groin and bit his ear off, he'd still kill you, but he'd respect you in a way that he didn't respect anybody else. And this is the reality of the world. And people in, in these liberal, feminine cultures will not accept the truth of it. So you don't get to wish away the bad guys. You don't get to wish them away. And if you have enough control over your feminized society to take the to take the aggression and the violence out of the local male population, that does not mean that everything's going to be cool here because it only means that you've only got the control over the decent people who are willing to listen and who want to be good people and who want to have a nice, happy society and who want their women to be happy. The only people who are going to listen to this are the, are the decent men. The indecent local men are going to become rapists and criminals the way they always have, and the indecent tribes from across the hills there are going to stay as violent and brutal as they always are. And when all of the domestic men have been completely neutered, it is not going to be a world of paradise and a world of peace. You are going to be little lambs who are going to be slaughtered. It doesn't matter if you surrender. It doesn't matter if you beg. And the only reason that we have this discussion at all right now is because women in America are not being gang raped by ISIS savages in America. If these guys come to America and start gang raping women in malls, then all of a sudden this feminism and this feminine tolerance of intolerable things will go away like that. Like that. They're going to want some action. And I want some action, too. This is the great irony of the whole thing, you know, is the thing that they cannot understand is that the people they hate the most, this is a big RK thing, but the people that these, that these feminized men and women hate the most, warriors, male warriors, mostly male warriors, but also female warriors, the warriors, the idea that the warriors have to go, the guns have to go, because if the guns go, there won't be any crime anymore is their way of not being able to simply accept the fact that there are people out there who want to kill them. They can't face it. They're terrified of it. They are, it is a neurotic form of fear. Sigmund Freud fed, said that uh, fear of weapons is a sign of, a, of an immature mind. If you cannot accept the fact that there are savages out there and savages among us, and therefore they have to be stopped, and they will not be stopped by reason, and they will not be stopped by compassion, and they will not be stopped by deals or negotiation, then you're left with one outcome, which is the outcome I've been at for pretty much all my life and certainly my mature life, and that is simply this. You had better hope that you can find a way to take male aggression and male violence and temper it with a female sense of just uh, gentleness, not justice. I think justice is a much more male term than female term, but a sense of gentleness and mercy. Tend temper it, which normally means harden, but in this case means soften. Soften it. Make it human. Make it about people. Make you understand there are consequences. You combine the warrior, which is these male qualities, and the poet, which are primarily female qualities, and you create a warrior poet, which is a kind, gentle, decent, loving person who will go out with a shotgun and blow the head off of anything that comes to threaten this piece. That's the world. That's the world you want. You want warriors 
who are decent, kind, loving family people who, as I said on that afterburner, will jump into a freezing river to save a drowning raccoon and at the same time are not so weakened by that compassion that they're not willing to blow one of these guys to atoms if they decide to come over here and start hurting our people or, or, or for that matter, hurting their own people, right? It's not so hard, really. And we used to teach this. We used to teach this all the time. And the reason that, the, that this feminized culture is accelerating is because they've succeeded so much now that there's, there's hardly anything left to stand up for. There's, there's no longer a, a, a center of goodness and strength that they can look to. All they see are these weak, neurotic men out here anyway. And they're filled with contempt for them, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them one little bit. They're completely filled with contempt. And women are not, they're not psychologically designed for this. You know, women make so many connections. It's not a question of their physical strength. They're just, it's, it's not, and it's not even a question of, of female lack of strength because females have tremendous emotional strength and mental strength in a certain number of ways. But this female parallel processing ability that is, that is put into them through, uh, through natural selection because their primary concern, at least historically, has been relationships, has been the social network, the structure that keeps, that keeps men from being animals, you know, that, that humanizes men, that stops them from living in dens and, you know, these frontier guys have been living in a, in, with, you know, dirt floors all their lives. They get a mail order bride and she comes in and she, she wants some money for, for wallpaper and, and, and flowers and, and, um, and curtains and makes his life human. He, he's not an animal anymore. But this ability to parallel process and worry about all these things means that they are not psychologically as well adapted as males are for threat detection and, and threat reaction. You know, the, the, they take little babies, this way young children, this way before they've had a chance to be socialized. And basically what you end up with is, if you put these little babies in a circle, you put boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, boy girl around in a circle in a room, well before they've been given colors and dolls and all the rest of it. What, what researchers found was that, the, that the, the little girls were looking at each other and, and starting to look at each other and communicate, and the boys were turning around and looking behind them. You know, they were, they were what's, what's, what's outside the circle versus what's inside the circle. Now, to say that there are not exceptions to this is idiocy, and to say that everybody has to be a, assigned a gender role and live with it is fascism. I don't care. If, you want to be a, if you're a woman and you're called to be a warrior, then rock on. You have my full support. I know a number of women, pilots, helicopter pilots, women warriors, are the, they're tough ass kickers and they have my undying respect. So let's not get confused about what I'm saying here. I'm talking about the bulk of the, of the, um, of the bell curve. You, you have young males who have a, a psychological inclination and you have, uh, you, there's no question that when you get into the, the actual standard deviation of, of male physique, men are f far stronger, far faster than women, far. We've had this conversation on the show before, but the reason there's a women's category in the Olympics is because if there wasn't, there wouldn't be any women in the Olympics. There's not a track team in America. Most high school track teams have boys that can run faster than the fastest woman in the world. They, most high school track teams have, have boys that run faster than the all-time women's record. You can argue about that. You maybe don't like it, but you can't argue about it because it's true. So they're designed for conflict. They're designed to be tough. They're designed to, they're designed to be tough and strong and, and hurt things. And where you have happiness is where that is channeled into hurting bad guys and not hurting the innocent. That's where you have a happy society. And Nazi Germany was not that society at all. Nazi Germany was based on cruelty and torture and murder. It was based on unrestrained masculine values of aggression and um, territoriality and superiority and arrogance and, and a complete disregard and dehumanizing entire classes of people, not just, not just individuals, but entire classes, you know? You, you, what kind of person can shoot a three-year-old child in the back of the head because they're Jewish or they're homosexuals or they're gypsies? kind of person can do that? I can't imagine it. I'd rather shoot myself. I would. I really would. I would do it before I would, before I would do that. There's some innocent kid there crying at the edge of a ditch. Honest to God. Honest to God. But at the same time, if that is an aberration of a society that is overly completely masculine, masculinized, then what kind of society 
would watch that without taking action. What if if the if an overly masculinized male or female, because there were sadistic female guards too, are people that can murder three-year-old children, that an overly feminized male and female are people that can watch it happen and not do anything if they're so incapacitated by fear or by uh, emotional sophistry or not wanting to hurt somebody. You know, I don't want to hurt people. I don't have any desire to hurt people. I have two weapons. My fondest hope is I never have to use them ever, like a parachute that I just bought. But, but... If you are really, t- and I've heard people say this, they've said that to my face, and I've called them a liar to their faces because they are lying. They think they're telling the truth or not. I had somebody say to me once, in the presence of somebody I was dating, somebody said to me, um, well, I'm very much against guns. Okay, well, that's an, that's an opinion. Fine. No, I mean it. She said, if somebody, if I would rather see my daughter raped and murdered than have her defend herself with a, with a gun. And at that point, I said, you're lying. You think you're telling the truth, but you're lying. It sounds good, and it feels good, and you've said this at cocktail parties for 30 years and gotten the gotten the, 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 the platitudes of, oh, wow, what an incredibly advanced, morally person, deep person you are. But I don't believe you. I think you're lying. In fact, I know you're lying. If you're telling me that you are watching your daughter being brutal, brutally raped and murdered, and I could put a gun in her hand and end it, you would say, no, don't do it. Better she dies. You're lying. You're lying for the sport of looking good, and I don't believe it, and it's evil thing to say. And you broke your daughter's heart, by the way, by saying you broke her heart, because she was shocked to hear you say it. Stunned. I was stunned, too. That's what happens when you have an overly feminized society, when you start talking about feelings and we don't want to hurt anybody. We want to care. These are all lovely things to have. But when you've got people that are out there murdering people or animals for that matter, just kicking dogs and, and, and burning cats in cages this is what these people do. You know? And not just them happens here too. They have to be dealt with. They have to be dealt with with strength. They have to be dealt with with strength that has been governed by a sense of moral core and a sense of duty and honor and codes among warriors exist because the honor codes of warriors are designed to protect the innocent. Does not anybody understand that? Doesn't anybody understand that these warrior codes that these feminists mock all the time, that these samurai codes are designed so that in the heat of combat, when when hormones and, and adrenaline are filled with your body and all you are wired to do and all you can do is kill everything in sight, that it is these codes of, of honor that say you don't hack women and children to pieces under any circumstances are there to to override these biological imperatives that that's what they're there for they're brakes on the system they're circuit breakers designed to stop this killing lust and keep it constrained to where it needs to be namely taking out the enemy warriors Does anybody understand this you know when people say you know, talk about male privileges and I didn't come up with this but I didn't wasn't like I learned this either this whole male privilege, male privilege, male privilege, male privilege, blah, 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 blah. Male privilege, male privilege, male privilege. I don't keep anybody down. On my, it's not in my business. I don't have any desire to stop anybody from achieving their own lives. But when the enemy starts coming over the hill and when the, when the barbarians start coming over the hill, it's going to be the men that are going to have to go face them while the women run away. And when the Titanic is going down to the bottom of the ocean and we're all going to die, a world that says women and children first is the kind of world I want to live in because I don't want to get back to New York in a lifeboat and think about the number of women and children that I had to punch in the face and throw overboard to their deaths so that I could survive. I'd rather live in a world where I went down with a ship, frankly. I'd rather have that kind of life. I'd rather be that kind of guy. Because not everybody goes down on the Titanic, you know? The huge numbers of people don't go down on the Titanic. But if you have a world where it's women and children first, you get to walk around with that kind of core of decency and honor and integrity, knowing that if the Titanic did go down on on your watch, it would be women and children first with you. You wouldn't be the kind of person who would have to kick women and children in the face so that you can get the spot on the lifeboat. That is a male, that is a male virtue. And it needs to be celebrated and protected the way it used to be. I think that's probably a good place to stop. Um, Yeah, yeah. You know, to say that it's a male virtue doesn't mean that women don't um, display it. It doesn't mean that uh, it's uniform. It means it's um, predominant. And we are rapidly heading into a world where, well, we're not heading into it. We are in a world where little boys are looked at as defective girls, girls that don't share, and, uh, and girls that climb trees. 
and they must be beaten or medicated into submission so that we won't have any more rape or murder anymore. And all we'll have is weak, mewling men. And when women start screaming because they're being raped, they're going to hold their hands over their mouths and run away and maybe make a 9-11 call, unlike the actual warriors that I know. And I'm one of them. I built this way. I mean, I don't wear a uniform, and I never uh, did anything other than regret that. So I don't claim to be wearing a uniform, but I do claim to be made out of that same stuff. I hear a scream in a parking lot. I'm going to run towards that scream. And every one of my friends will, too. And if you don't want people like that around, then you haven't ever been in a parking lot late at night. Because you can make all the arguments you want to about how, how much that bothers you. But if, if, and you can say things like, I'd rather have my daughter murdered and raped than have her defend herself with a gun. You can say that because it sounds good to you and your friends in this badly out-of-balance world we live in. But if you've never walked in a parking lot in a dicey neighborhood alone, male or female, and not wanted to live in a world where... You wanted somebody to call, come when you scream. If you call for help, even as a man, help. Don't you want to live in a world where other warriors are going to come to your aid? I do. I don't want to live in a world where, where we're surrounded by animals and we don't have any backup. You know, no. I don't think so. Not for me. So that's why we fight it. That's why we do the show. That's why we have BillWiddle.com. That's why we have our members. We thank every day, uh, every week anyway. And uh, that's how it works around here. <laughs>